Sarah, thank you so much for joining me on Misunderstood. So I, my first question is, do you pronounce it Sarah or is that just the American way? Is it Sarah? It's Sarah, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So even in America, we should say Sarah. If you can, but you know what? Perfect. It's cool. No, I like that. It's <laughs> it's very pretty. You know, oh, name. So, okay. I wanted to talk to you about um, where you are now. You had a very intentional path yeah. to get to where you are. Will you talk to us about that? Yeah, I mean, the journey's been incredible, to be honest, because where I am now is that I run a business which helps people all over the world mm -hmm. to cope better with any kind of breakup, heartbreak, separation, including divorce and including toxic mm -hmm. relationships. And it's something that's really close to my heart, having been through a really difficult divorce about 15 years ago mm -hmm. that I didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. And it kind of snuck up and hit me like a freight train yeah. and completely changed my whole world overnight. Right. So to be able to take that pain from going from doing, I, mean, I was a coach, I've been coaching for 15 years at mm -hmm. that point. And yeah, I, I was like on top of things and I was running things. I had a global business with my ex-husband as well. We had a son who was one. And then overnight I found out that not only was he not in love with me anymore, but he was madly in love with somebody else. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And when you find that out, there's certain things that don't help. Like she was 12 years younger than me. Right. She was stunningly beautiful. That mm. never helps either. Mm. Um, and she was pregnant within a couple of weeks of me oh, finding wow. out. So my whole world overnight just completely changed. Yeah. Um, she was made a director of our business, which wow. was very difficult. We had almost 200 staff and we were running offices in London and Australia. And having to go back into work and carry on running the business with that situation was really tough. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a lot of that ugly crying on the bathroom floor. Mm -hmm. And that's something that- We've all been there, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know you've been through this as well. And it's tough yeah. when you go through those situations, especially if you don't see it coming. Yeah. So overnight, everything changed. And I did spend a couple of months in that really dark place, like really dark, yeah. thinking, can I go on? Is this for me? Who am I? It's humiliating as well. Absolutely. And it, you know, the biggest thing it affects is your self-esteem. Why yeah. me? I'm not good enough. Um, and so you really internalize. I mean, I know because I've been through it, but I can imagine in the position you're, you were in that somebody came in and basically replaced you. A, a yeah. newer, shinier version, yeah. maybe because she was younger and all this stuff. And that's it. I totally got the upgrade when you saw her. I was like, oh, I get it. Right. OK. Yeah. But, but what do I do? Because I'm absolutely devastated. I was still in love with him. I still yeah. you know, wanted to be with him. And I think that unrequited love is a very hard situation to be in for anyone. And I think, you know, it's, it's one of those journeys that, you know, when you're down there, you've got a choice. And yeah. this is what I realized after a couple of months of all, you know, phoning my mom at 2 a.m. crying and, you know, not being able to sleep and not being able to eat. Yeah. Um, you know, in some ways I, I went on the divorce diet and I lost huge amounts of weight because I, I'd had my baby not long before. So I was still carrying some of that. So, you know, I lost that, but I, I wasn't eating. It wasn't healthy. Right. Um, but I decided I have a choice. You know, I was a coach and I was thinking, right, I need to get some help. Who do mm -hmm. I ask? Mm -hmm. And I quickly realized that there was so much help for, you know, if you want to stop smoking or you want to lose weight, there's loads of groups and books and so sort of all that sort of support you can get. Mm -hmm. But for heartbreak, literally nothing. Nothing specific apart from therapy, obviously, but that's slightly different to Although, what I And it's so interesting because that's the one thing that's universal, right? Yeah. Not everyone smokes, not everyone's an addict, but everyone has been through heartbreak. So you found this niche that everybody could kind of understand. So you said you had a background in being a life coach mm -hmm. before, a business coach. How, what, what was the, you know, stuff you had to go through? What was the training to actually get credentials in this kind of breakup coaching? Well, for me, I, I've always been really interested in personal development and all the best guys, to be honest, are over here in the in the States. Obviously, I'm from London, mm -hmm. England. So from a really early age out of university, I started a business to fly motivational speakers from the US over to the UK. And I literally fell into it by mistake. My dad had been over in the States on work and one of his business partners has said, John, come along to this Tony Robbins event. And uh -huh. my dad was like, oh, okay. So he went along and when he came back to the UK, he said, Sarah, I just want to give you one last gift. You finished your education and I know that, but I just really want you to try this. Mm. So I went to, uh, it was years ago now, and I went to a, uh, one of Tony's events and it was small, there's only like 200 people in the audience. Now he has obviously hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. um, and it completely changed my life. It took the blinkers off. So I got into personal development. I love the fact 
that we can change how we feel ourselves. Because yeah. I didn't learn that at school. At school, I was told, well, you'll probably be able to go and be a teacher or maybe an accountant. And, and I just didn't fit into any of those boxes. None mm -hmm. of it was exciting. I was like, oh, okay. So when I found this and it was like dream big and you can create your own reality and I was thinking, but I'm not good at anything. I was, I was pretty average at school and <laughs> you know, what, what could I do? How could I have my own business? And then I started thinking about it and I thought, I love this self-help industry. Yeah. I'm going to fly some speakers from the States to the UK because we really had nothing mm -hmm. back then. We had Paul McKenna, who's now a really big kid too, but mm -hmm. that was about it. So one of Tony's speakers actually said to me, I want to do some stuff in the UK. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I came back from a Robin seminar and said to my parents, I'm going to set up my own business and I'm going to promote these Americans. And they were like, okay. <laughs> and that's what I did. And it was yeah. incredible. That was a real turning point. So I trained with them all. So I've got my NLP master practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, I've done my hypnosis training as well. I've done a lot of different training over the years. And I've pretty much read loads of the self-help books, if not all of them, um, listened to all the audio books, cassettes it was back right. then. Mm -hmm. And you've <laughs> and, been through it. I mean, yeah. the difference, I think, that uh, a lot of people can have the credentials and go through the schooling and the mm. training, but when you've actually been something, been through something and you can understand what people are going through, it adds a whole another oh. level of credibility to it. Um, and empathy, right? Um, so you can really take it from there. What, what do you say would make a good coach? Well, for me, and I have a training school now because my mission is to help people all over the world to cope better. So just me on my own, I realized quickly that was going to be a big job coaching uh -huh. everyone. So I started to train people to become breakup and divorce coaches. And now I think we've trained over 500 coaches in 24 different countries. So oh, we're wow. getting these tools out to so many people, um, which is, I mean, I, I, that's my passion in life. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the most important thing when I train my coaches, I'm still really involved with that. Um, is you've got to walk your talk. Mm -hmm. And I think like you said, Rachel, spot on, like you've got to have been through or, or have bring in your own personal experience. You might, your parents might have been divorced yeah. or there's something that you've been through. And and the, the skills help you with any kind of life trauma, to be honest, yeah. but I'm honing it to break up and divorce, but how to dial down your own stress or how to dial down anger or jealousy or just that overwhelm and heartbreak, yeah. all those tools come into this. And yeah, so to be outstanding, absolutely have to walk your talk which means that when the going gets tough and you're sitting there thinking i'm just having a really bad day today it's instead of going back to your old patterns and your coping mechanisms which might be reaching for the bottle of wine or you know partying or mm -hmm. just hiding in bed or eating your feelings again is really common um what we say is this is the time to stretch and, and step up yeah. and actually use the tools so yeah it's walking your talk even when it's hard